Hey, buddy, welcome back. Devin Neo G, original Grognard, sitting down, continuing our playthrough of a Second World War at Sea from Avalanche Press, the Coral Sea box set, doing the uh, one of the two operations that are provided in the Coral Sea. Uh, this one is the shorter of the two. Uh, this is the 10-day operational campaign. The uh, the other one is a full, massive 30-day campaign for uh, examining and looking at uh, if the uh, Japanese had made more of an effort to try to capture <laughs> Port Moresby. Um, so we learned a lot of things from the last episode. Pretty much that if you're going to send bombers to bomb a port, you need at least three steps or, yeah, three steps worth of you need to be able to inflict at least three hits on the port to do any effect, and usually one bomber isn't enough to do that. You have to send multiple bombers out there. Also, we also we ran into kind of an issue on figuring out how anti-submarine warfare worked. It works kind of like air searches, but not really. I mean, they both share the same DNA. The main difference between the air searches and uh, anti-submarine warfare is air searches, when you're looking for a task force, you take all the steps of everything that can, that can uh, have, uh, all the steps of search aircraft that have range on the task force can all be added together to try to find it. With anti-submarine warfare, it's just each port or each airbase that's sending out anti-submarine warfare aircraft to search, you roll it by that. So, for example, if you had a, a naval or a submarine flotilla here and had three different airbases that were searching for it, technically each one of those airbases could roll individually to try to spot the submarine. Whereas if you're going after a task force and you have three or four uh, airfields that have range on it. You just make one roll, but adding in all the all the aircraft from 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 the search. Also, yes, from what we found out last time, you do need a six to spot uh, flotilla. And so, basically, <laughs> barring any steps step uh multiple step aircraft you're not going to spot anything beyond one or two spaces from the search base because once you get to three to four then you're looking at negative one if you need a six you're not going to get it so if you want to be able to find anything from three to four, any any slub flotilla slub they did that sub flotillas three to four you're going to need at least three to four steps of search aircraft from that uh base. If you want to go five to six zones from the search base, you're going to need five to six steps of search. Do you see, see what I'm going? And it's virtually impossible to find a submarine flotilla nine zones away from the base, regardless of how many aircraft or how many, how many steps of search aircraft you have on it. Now, I did time on an anti-submarine warfare ship Actually, I did time on two anti-submarine warfare. I know sub-warfare is tough. This seemed a little bit too excessive. But, you know, whatever. That's the way it is. That's the way the rules are. So taking those into account, I think we can speed up aircraft determination a little bit easier. Because it wouldn't make sense to send bombers, Japanese bombers, to bomb something if they're not going to have enough potential damage to damage the base. Plus... <laughs> there just isn't enough search aircraft at any one Japanese air, airfield to have, you know, three to four steps. So doing anti-submarine warfare, when we know that the two American sub-flotillas are well beyond the range of, you know, even, well, possibly here, if we had like 10 steps of search aircraft, they might be able to step, spot that flotilla. So I don't think we need to worry about putting, uh, rolling up aircraft going on ASW warfare on our, or on our solitaire table. So I think we're going to go ahead and if we do get ASW, we'll just switch that to a search. Um, 
And if for some reason we get a roll of a bomber to bomb an airfield, then we're going to take all the bombers from that airfield, from from the from that friendly airfield, to bomb as long as they can generate, potentially generate enough hits on the target. Then we'll go, then we'll go ahead and commit all the bombers we can. Again, this is not the best system for solitaire, so you kind of got to play with it a little bit. And honestly, if you're a veteran war gamer. You've had to do this before for other games. It's just this one takes a little bit more work. So, all right, we're stepping into turn two. And let me see if I can do this without making a mess all over the place. Uh, where's my record sheet? Again, we have the player log sheet. I was going to start writing stuff, the, the, the commands down, but like I said, eh, we're not doing that. We're just kind of using this to keep track of the turns. So turn one is done. We're on turn two. So let me go ahead and mark that. Let's just mark turn one off. So now we're in turn two and hopefully <laughs> we'll be able to move, move this along a little bit quicker than we have before. Oh, stuff is spread out all over the place. I'm going to start dropping stuff. All right. So what do we do first? Campaign turn, a sequence of play. I really do need to get this blown up so I can have this set in off to the side someplace. Chuck weather. All right. Well, we already know from the special rules. One, two, one or two, it, uh, the weather moves towards clear. Six, it moves towards gale. So one again because we got that last turn. So now we are definitely in clear weather. Zoom in on the weather track up there. It did start off uh, on rain. Then last turn, I think we rolled a two, which shifted it down towards cloudy. And this turn we rolled a one, which shifted it down towards clear, which will help search results. And planes taking off and landing. All right, next. Assign aircraft and ready boxes to cap, search, or ASW missions. All right. So we'll go ahead and start with the Japanese first. Uh, let's see. What do we got? That is... Uh, what is that? AGM-2. I think that's a zero. <laughs> uh, AGM-6-2. Or A6 and AGM-2. Yeah, that's a zero. Uh, so we've got zeros at Kaving. Um, so fighters, 12, escort. There's no escort because they've got no bombers. So let's just go ahead and put them on cap. All right. Now, remember, everything that's already on cap or on ASW can remain that way for the remainder of the turn. Uh, so, okay. So now let's move on down to Rabul. And we've got... Uh, two bomber units, G6M1s. Now, these guys could potentially generate a point of damage on Port Moresby. So, let's see. Seven for level bombers is a land strike. So, you know what? We're not going to roll for both of them. We're just going to commit both of them to a land strike on Port Moresby. So just to remind us, let's go ahead and put those guys right there. Uh, it doesn't matter about fighter escort. There's no fighters from Rabul that has the range to escort them all the way to Port Moresby. Uh, all right, so let's continue on with the next set. Uh, again, we've got two bombers, uh, two different bomber types. Let's see what, see what they're going to do. Level bombers, that's a nine. That's a land strike. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and commit both of them as well to striking Port Moresby. So we'll just put both of those like that so we can differentiate between which that they came from two different bases. Uh, all right, go down towards uh, the rest of the Japanese. Aircraft Shokaku, Juikaku, they're not on board yet. Shoho is on, but as far as I know... Yeah, all they've got is fighters. Fighters and some dive bombers. So they really can't do anything. Uh, then that also leaves the Kamakaru Maru. 
which we know is uh, the task force sitting right here, which is the seaplane tender. Uh, we got the hangar that'll sh that should have shifted into the ready box. So we got two units of seaplanes. Let's see what they do. Five. Uh, naval strike or land strike, depending on which fight. Well, neither one of them have a naval strike or land strike. You know what? Let's just go ahead and put them on search. I think, I think that would probably make the most sense. And so search, we're going to put right on the task force to remind us that they are searching. All right, so that's the Japanese. Now we've got the U.S., our allies, I should say. Uh, again, the Yorktown and the Lexington, I'm not going to bother putting search planes up because as far as I know, there's no Japanese task force in the area. Yes, there's this task force here, but they don't know what's there. They would have no reason to send out search planes. Again, I couldn't find any historical tracking or, or, or write-up on what this task force actually was doing during the Battle of Coral Sea. So, since the Americans or the Allies are only concerned and know about the carriers that are coming from truck, well, they're only going to worry about sending out search planes when they get reasonably close. But let's take a look at let's see what do we got for Port Moresby? All right, first of all, what we want to do is we want to take our fighters and put our fighters on combat air patrol because we forgot to do that last turn. So we got some P-39s and A-24s. I think the A-24s were fighters. Yeah. No, those were dive bombers. All right, but we will take the fighters and put them on camp. Uh, let's see, we got bomber range th eight, PBY range 16. They'll go on search. And then the dive bombers. Um... You know, let's put the dive... Well, I think I've only got a range of eight. No, they're not going to do that yet. So let's go ahead and take the PBY and put him on search. I'll put him there to mark that he's there doing search. All right, Tulagi. Yeah, let's go ahead and put him on search just because... Ah... <sighs> Cames, uh, has only got a fighter defending it. Uh, nothing really there. Townsville has got a couple bombers. You know what? Let's go ahead and put these guys on on search, just because. Just because. Put those guys on search. Uh, and then Esprit de Santo. Fairly certain that everything at Esprit de Santo is out of range of anything. Yeah. Bombers with a range of 15. Some fighters. Bombers. Now what I could do is transfer these aircraft to another airfield. But let's see. 15-1, 18-1... The rules say you can only transfer your movement range plus 25%. So let's even take, well, let's see. The B-17s can probably make it. Because the B-17... Oh, come on, focus. Come on. It's got a range of 16-2. So it basically can go 32 spaces... Plus 25%, which is, you know, 40 spaces. So the B-17 could probably, you know, switch over to Townsville. But the other aircraft, I mean, are 15-1, 11-1, 18-1. So 18 plus another 25%, 22, 23, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't even come close. It's still like eight hexes away from, from getting to Townsville. So that's what the rules say. Um, I'm not sure I agree with it because, you know, should be, well, maybe, I don't know. 
I don't know aircraft ranges that well. So anyways, from Esprit de Santo, we'll just leave all that stuff there. Uh, then the, the, Levy, the Lexington and Yorktown, yeah, all right, they're fine. Uh, not going to send any aircraft out with them. The Tangiers, which is the uh, the other um, Jeep carrier or, or seaplane tender, uh, which is sitting way back here. They're not going to send anything out. Because, again, they, they don't know this task force is here, so there's been no reason for them to send it, send the search planes out. I mean, historically, from an actual standpoint, yeah, I think the aircraft were always going out. But you know what? We're trying to save a little bit of time here because I'm a bit too long-winded to begin with. So that's aircraft. <clears throat> now, again, if you were playing with a per plane head-to-head -head against someone who knew the system, you'd be kind of burning through this pretty quick, but... I'm not because I'm not a clever man and I'm describing things. Uh, write orders for fleets with required number of turns ahead, yada, yada, yada. We're ignoring that because we're playing solitaire. Uh, air search and ASW patrols are executed. All right, so let's do air searches. Okay, we know there's no ASW patrols, so we've got air searches. Let's go ahead and take a look at these guys. Let's start off here. Oh, yeah, that's the reason I didn't put one of those up. So, oh, come on. So this seaplane has got a range of 8-1, which means it can only go four hexes out. But the uh, E-13A has got a range of 8-2, so it can go eight hexes out. So one, two, three, four. The one seaplane... One, two, three, four. The one seaplane can't make it, but... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, they can. They definitely do have a chance uh, to get out there to Task Force 2. So let's go ahead and put these guys in the hangar. Now, now we're going to be able to search. Take a look at the search table. Air search modifiers. We need a three or more to spot the task force. Now, okay, three to four steps of aircraft, actually multiple steps of aircraft, doesn't come into effect because it's only a half step that's searching. Uh, target sighted last turn, nope. Task force unloading target. Nope. Search aircraft include fighters. Nope. Task force is three to four. I think it was eight zones away. Let's count it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven zones away. So the modifier is going to be a minus three. Uh, weather is cloudy. Nope. Rain. Nope. Squall. Storm. Gale. Yada, yada, yada. So normally we'd need a three, but it is seven to eight zones away. So it's a minus three. So we need a six. So Yeah. You're not really going to spot too many task force too far away from you. One, nothing. All right, so that search was was no good. Did we have any more? That's all for the Japanese searches. Now we have U.S. searches. Uh, so here we've got from Tulagi. What's their range? They're a 16-2. So they can go 16 spaces out. Actually, the Tulagi force is close enough they have a chance of spotting because that with they're within the this submarine task flotilla is within two hexes of tulagi i could have put those pbys on asw but again i don't know those are there so you know whatever um so the only task force okay we got this task force right here and those planes are in one two three four five six seven eight <laughs> And these guys down here have got a range of 16, too, so they can go 16 out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, so those guys can't even assist in the search. They're just too far away. I think I remember that from last turn. All right, so these guys can try to spot this task force, although, you know, they're, they're mostly keeping their eyes out this way because they know... They're keeping their eyes out this way because they know that the main task forces are coming from Tulagi. Or not from Tulagi, from the truck. <sighs> but they're... How far away did we say they were? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spaces away. We take a look at our modifier. Minus three. There's no multiple steps. So we need a six to spot them. Five, no, 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 came kind of close, but uh, no, no luck. So that air, that search plane from Tulagi goes into the hangar. And these guys, the PBYs here from Port Moresby, 16 to, 
Let's see, they might be able to spot one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, now 10. Okay, so it's got to be at least eight hexes away for a single step, a half step or single step to even have a chance to spot them. So they went up on search, but they didn't find anything because they could have spotted this task force up here or the one at Rabul, but it was just too many hexes away. So I'll go ahead and land them at Port Moresby. All right, so that's all from searches. And again, like I said, if you're playing with someone who knows the system, you're going to, what just took me seven, eight minutes to do, and you're probably doing one or two minutes. So do not, do not use my speed of gameplay as a measuring stick for how the game acts, how fast the game actually goes. Uh, okay, um, assign aircraft and ready boxes to airstrike missions. All right, so this is kind of what we, we, we kind of did this with the Japanese already. We do that when we were rolling up the air unit missions. I explained this last video. But we know that there are there airstrikes or land strikes. Uh, assign aircraft to airstrike missions. All right, so they are airstriking. So we know these were assigned at the beginning of the turn. So we know that those two bomber fleet bomber flotillas, flotillas air air groups would be heading towards Port Moresby. Then uh move fleets check for fuel and check for floundering all right so since i am not the ai i'm going to move my stuff first uh test force three which is the tangiers they're going to go ahead and move what's their fastest they can move i think they can only move a one plus uh yeah they're a one plus so one now nah, let's just keep meandering at speed one. Okay, so what we're going to do with Task Force One, which is the Yorktown, they're actually going to refuel. They're going to they're going to sit in Espirito Santo and they're going to refuel because they were down a full fuel box. Now, when you're in port for a turn, you can refill six fuel boxes. Each ship that spends a turn in port can refuel six fuel boxes. Um, so I've only got one fuel box down on each of the ships. So. Yeah, they'll 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 be capped up and refueled next turn. But again, they can't do anything. They're in import refueling. Uh, Task Force Four, which is my refueling group of the uh, Shoho or Neo Neo Show and the other one. Uh, they're going to stay right where they are. They're not going to move. But the Lexington is going to kind of meander one movement point this way just because. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's it for movement. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and, and mark off our fuel expenditures. So Task Force 1 is spending an entire turn in port and is going to get rid of six fuel boxes. Now remember, six fuel boxes equals 24 fuel units. So we've got 25. So they'll task force two. We'll go ahead and get rid of everything. Task force three and four. Oh, man. They're not going to run out of fuel anytime soon because they're only moving at speed one. Uh, task force five isn't even on board yet. So we've got task force one. It moved one hex, so it burns one fuel. Now remember, it's got a total of 168 before the lowest fuel sh ship, which are the destroyers, run out of fuel. So 24, 25. So we've only spent 26 of our 168. We're good on fuel for a while. Of course, again, I'm moving only speed one. If I were to start cranking the speed up to two, three, or whatever, actually, I think those ta most of the task forces can only go three, maybe three plus, depending. Um, uh, my fuel expenditure would be <laughs> exponentially going to be going through the roof. All right, so that's the U.S. task force. Let's go ahead and now roll for the Japanese task forces. Now, remember, with our AI, we have... Uh, we set certain uh, targets for each of the different uh, uh, task forces. Let's see. I'll go ahead and put the Townsville bombers back in their box. All right. So task force four, we were saying was going to be uh, assisting the Tulagi. So that's kind of their target. So let's go ahead and roll and see. Task force four. Let's see what their speed is going to be. Is one. It's going to be full speed. Wow. What's their full speed? I think that's a one plus. <laughs> Yep, it's a one plus. I've got. Uh, remember, you always move at the speed of the slowest ship in the in the task force, and so their speed is a one plus. 
even though the destroyers or the crew, the light cruiser is speed three, you can't go faster than the slower ship, which is the Kamikawa Maru. It's a one plus, so it moves one speed normally, but it can move two spaces or speed two on even turns. This is an even turn. So it is going to move two spaces. Let's see what direction it's going to go. Uh, submarine speed directions. Three desired directions. So it's going to go two spaces towards the Tulagi task group. So let's just go one, two, right there, like that. Easy enough. Uh, submarines, we're not going to roll for the submarines. We're just going to keep them on station. No American task forces have been sighted yet. And again, same with mine. I'm not going to move my submarine flotillas because no enemy task force has been sighted yet. I mean, yes, in a grand scheme of things, I know where the Japanese task forces are playing this game. Historically, with Fog of War, I wouldn't... It would make sense. They knew the Japanese flotilla... Uh, transports, the Port Moresby Invasion Force was going to be coming down right through here. We don't really, we kind of had an idea that they're going out to Tulagi, so I'm going to keep these guys up here. You know, just keep them on station to intercept any anything that comes towards Tulagi. Uh, all right, uh, Task Force 2, uh, again, that's the Port Moresby Invasion Force. Historically did not leave Port Moresby, or yeah, didn't leave Rabul until the fourth day, so we're not going to move them yet. So that leaves Task Force 1 and 2. Task Force One, which is the Shoho escorting group, are escorting or covering the Tulagi invasion force. So let's see what they do. 18 uh, is going to be one zone for the Shoho task force. Or the, uh, yeah, yeah, the Shoho. Uh, 18 right and away from desired location. All right, right and away. So that would be kind of, well, that kind of makes sense. That they would go there, one zone. Um, and then the Tulagi uh, invasion force, I've already decided they're just going to move at maximum speed towards Tulagi. Uh, I'm not going to roll deviation for it. They just need to get there as quick as they can. Um, uh, so the transports are the slowest uh, ships in the task force, and they move one plus. So they'll move two zones on even number turns. It's an even number turn. So one, two. So they'll move right there. Yeah, kind of slow moving. <laughs> When you don't have a lot of speed to go along or a lot of speed to back things up. So that's movement. All movement is taken care of. Check for contact between uh, surface fleets and resolve tactical combat. None. Check for contact by submarines. Resolve. None. Airstrikes planned in step five are executed. All right. Well, easy enough. Really, the only strikes that we had planned were the two different bomber groups that are heading towards Port Moresby. Alrighty, so we do have air units that are on cap over Port Moresby this turn. And we can see it's these P-39Ds. Are those the Air Cobras? I think those are the Air Cobras. Um, so they're on uh, cap. The M is their flight altitude, which means they can go up to medium height so they can intercept bombers at medium which I believe the Japanese bombers are all medium. I don't think the Japanese ever developed high-altitude bombers. <laughs> Pretty much only the U.S. was the only one that ever developed. Yeah, so those are M's. So those are medium altitude. So my fighters can intercept them. Now, interceptors have a range of two zones. So you can, any cap can try to attempt to intercept any flights that come within two zones of it. So technically, since both of the, well, they can only do that once per turn. They can only attempt to intercept something up to two zones away once per turn, although they can try to intercept everything in their zone as many times, per, as many flights, enemy flights that come in. So if for some reason uh, there was a flight, say it flew right through between here and there were Japanese interceptors at both these two ports, since they were within two, each one of them could go out to two spaces to try to intercept. For this one, Port Moresby, we could go out two zones as each flight comes in. However, to do that, you have to you actually have to roll to see if you can uh, uh, spot or inter well if you can actually intercept the flights coming in. Um, it's a you need to roll a three or better, three or better, three or more. Fairly certain it's a three or more. Yeah, it's a three or more. 
But for every zone away that you're trying to intercept, you roll one, you subtract one from the dice roll. So if you want to intercept something two zones away, you need to roll a five or better. Four zones away. And you can only do that once per turn. And if you miss it, well, you kind of miss it. I don't think you can go back. And if you if you miss it here, try again when they move in the zone. So we're not going to try to enter those, those uh, P-39s are not going to try to intercept. They're just going to catch them as they come in. Now, each one of these, since they didn't come from the same base, each one of these flights of two, air, two, two aircraft each came from different bases. So there's going to be two strikes on it, but I can intercept twice. You can intercept over your base as many times as you have enemy flights in. So let's go ahead and take the first one. Let's just go ahead and move that to the side there. We're going to roll to see if we can intercept that one. We need a three or better. And we rolled a one. So we weren't able to intercept the first flight. And let's just go ahead and roll for the second flight. And a two. We didn't intercept that one either. I better check the table just to make sure there's no, <laughs> no modifiers. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, anything. So cap interception of search aircraft. Or that's search aircraft. Uh, interception of flight. Uh, yeah, there's nothing that gives me a bonus. So for some reason, my aircraft just... Didn't detect. All right, all right. I, I can get it. It's 1942. You know, radar at Port Moresby is not good enough to get over the mountains, <laughs> that mountain range that the Japanese aircraft would be coming from. So both flights are going to get through, and we got no cap fire, no cap fire at them. But we do have anti-aircraft fire. And again, since these are considered two different strikes, we have two, you know, two different attacks to make. So Port Moresby. Let's go ahead. See if we can take a look on our sheet. I don't know if you're going to be able to read this, but Port Moresby uh, has got L5. What is that? Oh, land. I think that's land. Um, capacity 20. That's how many steps of aircraft. It can have 20 steps of aircraft. And then anti-aircraft is right there, and I don't have my glasses on. So what is the anti-aircraft? Five. So it's got five anti-aircraft. So we got five dice we have to roll for, for anti-aircraft fire against the first flight. Uh, oh, well, actually, uh, okay, so we managed to get one hit. Because we need sixes or more, and I don't think there's any modifiers to anti-aircraft. Oh, no, that's right. The only anti modifier to anti-aircraft is American forces after 1944 get a plus one to their dice roll. I remember that from last time we took a look at it. So what happens when we actually hit one of the bombers or one of the strike aircraft coming in? Air search, air strike, naval strike, port strike, anti-aircraft. We're just looking at it. Where is it? The air combat, airstrikes, target location. Da, 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 da. Aircraft. On a roll of six, one step of attacking aircraft may not attack. Half of those steps not allowed to attack are destroyed. All right, so we only got one hit on them, so one step of the Japanese aircraft is not going to be able to strike. However, I need to get at least two hits to destroy one step of aircraft. So, one of the one of these aircraft is only going to be striking at half strength, like so. So, and then we take their land attack value, which is this number right here, the two and the one, so that's three. And they don't have any special modifiers. So normally you'll see special modifiers. I think the B-17 has bombing modifiers. Uh, land bombing modifiers. It's, you can see they've got these target reticles, so they're actually a little bit better at land bombing. But the Japanese don't have that, so you know don't have to worry too much about it. They do have three dice that they're throwing. So there is a potential for them to be able to do a step of damage. Now I'm going to have to roll three sixes. Uh, three, five, six. Now we got one hit. Almost got a second hit. So 
yes, they bombed, they probably did some damage, but not enough to have any mechanical effect on the game. So, now, since the strike is over, we'll go ahead and flip this guy back over to its full strength size, because again, we only got one hit on the strike aircraft, so it only, re it only one step wasn't allowed to attack. So let's go ahead, and these guys will fall, fly back. They came from uh, Rabul, so we'll put them in the ready box in Rabul. Now the second flight is going to be coming in. Again, we've got five dice, anti-aircraft fire. Uh, oh, hey, there we go. We got two hits this time. So what's going to happen is that one step of aircraft is not going to be able to attack at all because it took two hits and each one keeps one step from attacking. That leaves them with two dice to do the land attack. We already know two dice isn't enough to hurt an airfield or an airbase. So boom, 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 they drop the bombs, do a little bit of damage, but mechanically has no effect in the game. Now, let's just check, make sure we got that right with anti-aircraft fire. Airstrikes. Uh, half of those steps not allowed to attack or destroy it. All right, so yeah, players alternate choosing with owning player go first. Uh, Anti-aircraft may or may not be, be conducted against high altitude aircraft. So, <sighs> sorry for leaving you with the fuzzy screen. So, anti-aircraft fire, we got two hits. Prevented two steps from being able to help in the bombing raid. Half of those are inflicted as casualties. So that will flip the step over. And you know what? There's something I just realized. I am going to have to check into that. If you round all fractions up, even if you get one hit on them, that will be a step loss because you round all fractions up. So let's go ahead. And that first flight that had one step loss or step removed for anti-aircraft fire, that would also lose a, uh, a step of aircraft. This one, again, as well, would also lose a step of aircraft. So that's basically what it looks like now. The G3M2 squadron is at full strength. The G4M1 is at half strength. It's flipped over to its half strength side. And put these guys in their ready box. All righty. No appreciable damage was done. Would have been nice to get the, if the cap had been able to spot them, because then we could uh, see how that works. I'm sure we will eventually. <laughs> All right, uh, da, da, da. I will have to check that. I, I'll, I'll check. I'll check just to make sure uh, on that rule. Uh, airstrike missions planned in step five are executed. Yada yada. Uh, aircraft in hangar boxes moved to ready boxes on air bases and carriers. Uh, so yeah, again, as we know, you can move on air bases. It's two two aircraft from the hangar into the ready box, and on carriers. Is it one step? I forgot that. I think it's one step. Or not one step, one aircraft. Uh, air sweeps, submarines, salvage. Let's see, rearming. Return. At each airfield, players may place two aircraft counters which just landed in the ready box. Uh, skipping the hangar box so they may fly mission again. On each CV, which has not suffered any hull damage, players may place one aircraft counter in the ready box. All right, so it was exactly what I thought it was. Uh, so, yeah, we already moved ready to ready to those. Now here, with the Kamigaru Maru, we put two, step, or we put two aircraft out. Uh, both of them come back. After the search, landed on landed in the hangar. However, we can only move one aircraft to the ready box. So, you know what? Let's go ahead and move the E-13A, which is actually the only aircraft that they have that has the range to be able to reach out to see the U.S. carriers. Uh, the other one will remain in the hangar box. So, 
All right, well, there we go. That's turn two. Definitely went uh, quicker than the first turn did. Uh, I have a feeling. What I Well, what I may do is I may just offline go ahead and play through several turns uh, just to get, you know, this, this minor minutia BS, as it were, out of the way and get to the point where we're actually uh, engaging each other. I, I'm a little, little, I don't want to say disappointed, kind of irks me that the Coral Sea scenario or the Coral Sea campaign in the Coral Sea box set is 10 days long. In SOPAC, which I also have up there, I can't see it very well from the glow, the SOPAC, which basically covers this and this area as well a lot, has a has the Coral Sea campaign in it as well, but it's only three days long, and it's you know with the carrier at least I think it's three days long. No, I think it I think that's I think it's eight days long. To speed things up a little bit, they should have at least made the campaign where you don't have three or four days of just maneuvering forces before you get into range of each other. Now, again, you're playing face-to-face -face with someone who knows this. You could probably burn through those three or four days in less than an hour. So you're not taking that much time to get to contact. I just wish that that was the case with the scenario set up with this one. So what I may do is I may just go through, play a few turns out until we get to, like, to the invasion of Tulagi or until... Well, basically, something interesting happens because right now we're just maneuvering forces and throwing out, you know, the occasional search plane and the occasional raid. I have a feeling we may we may suspend <laughs> operations bombing Port Moresby because we did take some bomber losses already. Um, and really, it, let's see, it really isn't gonna affect. Yeah, I think I may suspend bomber operations on Port Moresby for a while just because I need three steps to hurt the airfield and four steps, or no, three, three, three hits will destroy a step of aircraft in the hangar. Uh, that might be, but I need sixes to hit and the best I'm looking at is four dice. So yeah, I think I may suspend. I'm just losing aircraft left and right from anti-aircraft fire. It's, it's much easier for, let's put it this way, it's much easier for the airfield to inflict damage on the bombers than it is for the bombers to inflict damage on the aircraft, on the airfield. So, like I said, I, let me know what you think if I should just, you know, kind of say, hey, screw it, play a few, play several turns off on my own uh, until we get to the point where we have something exciting uh, and then pick up the gameplay from there, which I'm really kind of leaning towards. But I want to hear everybody's opinions. Uh, what do we got? That's it. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms in the comment section. I'll see everybody next time. See ya.